Okay, so let's now have our example for uh, moment error theorem. Example number one, since we will be having two examples, the first example is about statically determinate beam, and our second example will be statically indeterminate beam, which will be on our next video. Para kasi masyadong mahaba eh. Okay? <clears throat> so let's start, no? So let's have an example for example, siguro, uh, let's have a simply supported beam lang muna. Okay? Then let's have a uh, triangular load. Let's say this triangular load is uh, 30 kilonewton per meter. Then let's have a um, point load here. So let's say this is uh, 50 kilonewtons. So let's have the distances and points. No? We have point A, B, C, and D. Then let's have the distances. Let's say this is uh, 1 meter. 1 meter and let's say this is 3 meters. So obviously the first step is for us to determine the reactions. No? So let's calculate reaction at uh, A and D. So moment muna tayo sa A. So we can have reaction at D. No? So that is, uh, we have 0.5 multiplied by 30 times the span 3 multiplied by its centroid, which is 2. That's 2 thirds of 3. Plus 50 times 4. No? That's 1 plus 3. Divide by the span 5. So this is 58 kilonewtons. We can have the summation of forces vertical, pero sabi ko nga in our previous videos, it's better to use the summation of moment na lang on the other point so that we can use yung summation of forces vertical as checking na lang. Kasi minsan nagkakamali tayo in getting the reactions, tapos nagtuloy-tuloy tayo, nagtuloy-tuloy ka sa isang bagay na sa umpisa pa lang, mali na pala. Okay? Nasakit yun. So... We have here, let's take a moment at uh, point D naman. So we have 50 times the moment arm of 1 meter. Okay, pakita natin yung calculations. 1 meter plus yung area ng triangular, that's 0. 0.5 times 30 times 3. Then yung moment arm niya is 2 plus center dito is 1 divide by 5. So, this is 37 kilonewton. So, check natin kung tama. 37 plus 58, 95. Dapat to yan. 95 in total ng downward force. So, that's 0. 0.5 times 30 times 3 plus 50. So, that's 95. Okay? So, wala tayong problema sa reactions. Now, <clears throat> in the moment area theorem, the first step is for us to draw the moment diagram. Why? Because the moment error theorem is based on our discussion of concept is dependent on the moment diagram. Okay? Yung DIM natin, yung double integration method is dependent on the moment function or the moment equation. Thus, we need to create the moment equation. But for the moment error theorem, since uh, it, we are dependent on the diagram or the moment diagram the, or the M over EI diagram or the moment diagram divided by the flexural rigidity EI, we must have first the moment diagram. Okay, so meron tayong conventional way of drawing the moment diagram but it will be hard for us to, uh, to determine the centroids of those figures especially kung meron tayong mga triangular loads or spandrel loads tapos hindi natin na kailangan pa natin identify yung location ng vertex niya kasi we cannot use the formula for spandrels unless otherwise we can identify the location of its uh, vertex. Kasi doon lang natin siya pwedeng gamitin. Okay? So, anong pinakamadali? So, we have in your uh, mechanics of deformable bodies tsaka even in your statics of rigid bodies of what we call the method of superposition. So, when we say the method of superposition, we are actually... Um, the concept is, yung total reaction daw ng, ng individual force will just be equal 
to the reaction ng forces kapag tinutal natin siya in a single diagram. Ibig sabihin, pwede naman palang paghiwahiwalay natin or himay-himayan natin yung loads natin separately rather than taking it as a whole. In that concept, or based on the method of superposition, doon po na-develop yung tinatawag natin na moment by parts. Okay? So, when we say moment by parts, we are actually getting the moment diagram per load po natin. Basta tatandaan lang po natin that the diagram or the load will result in a moment diagram of a plus 2 na degree ng spandrel. So, if meaning if we have a... Uh, rectangular loading, meaning it's a zero degree curve, automatic ang magiging result po niya is a second degree spandrel para magkaroon tayo ng moment. Kung triangular magiging third degree kasi first degree po yung triangular, kung point load it will just have a first degree moment diagram. So, ang tanong is if you are well versed in what we call the moment by parts, ang tanong, saan natin siya iperperform? Okay? So, the best way to, to cut the beam para ma-provide natin yung moment, yung moment by parts is on a location doon sa points of discontinuity natin. But as you can see, we have two points of discontinuity at point B at saka at point C. So, ang ginagawa natin is uh, pinakamadali siya is itatabi natin siya into a distributed load. Okay? If we have uniformly distributed load or a in uniformly increasing load, basta doon sa distributed load natin. Uh, so, in that case, ah, halimbawa, nagka, kunyari lang, uniform load to, mas madali pa rin na ilagay natin siya dito kasi mas madaling i-extend or magdagdag bawas doon sa uniform load kaysa doon sa uniformly increasing load. Okay, so, at this case, we will be providing a cutting plane or doon tayo magpo-provide ng mag-apply ng moment by parts natin at point B. So, lagyan natin siya ng guhit dito. Okay, let's say that is your cutting plane. Okay, so how do we draw the moment diagram? So sabi natin by parts. How many loads do we have? We have, we have actually two on the left side and two on the right side. Yung reactive force, then yung load. Reactive force, then yung load. Okay, actually kahit when we are determining, when in your statics of rigid bodies, if we are determining the moment at a single point, kahit isang part lang yung kinoconsider natin. Okay. But in this case, we need to have the moment diagram of the whole beam. Okay, tapos magagamit din natin to for checking. Kasi yung moment given by the left side of the beam at that point, at point B, must also be give, must also be equal to the moment provided on the diagrams on the right side at point B. So in this case, we have an upward moment. Paano pa natin pala manalaman if, it, if, if it's a positive or neg negative moment? Always remember that a positive moment makes the beam smile. And a negative moment, obviously, makes the beam sad. No? So, pag pa smile obviously, ito. So, itong dalawang ito, papansin nyo, uh, pag anon yung ikot natin no? at this point. No? Big sabihin, mag smile po yung beam natin. So, these two will provide positive moments. And these two loads will provide negative moments. So, at this case, we have just point load para makuha yung moment dito. Force times distance. So, that's 37 times 3. Sabi natin kanina, point load will provide a linear moment diagram. And we have 37 times 3, that is 111. So, this is positive 111 kilonewton meter. Okay. Then, we have here your negative first degree curve yan kasi triangle. triangle. So, it will provide a second, uh, a third degree uh, moment diagram. So, lagyan natin dito yung spandrel natin. Kunyari, third degree yan. Okay, so we have here a third degree spandrel. Ano value? So that syempre yung moment mo lang tong triangular load. So that is just one half or 0.5 of 30 times the span 3. Tapos yung moment, yung centroid niya papunta dito kasi dito tayo nag-moment. So that is one third of 3 or that's 1. So that is 45. So this is negative 45. Next we have two point loads. Okay, unahin natin to 58. 58 times 2. That will give you 116. And 50. Dito na yung nakatapat ha. Times 1. That will give you 50. Negative. Okay. So, paano daw natin malalaman if the moment diagram is... Oh, sorry. Hindi na pala kita. Ayan. 50 times 1. 
Straight line po yan. Mukha lang curve. Okay. So, lagyan natin yung mga, ano, para nila kakalito. First degree curve, first degree curve, first degree curve. So, how can we now identify if we have the correct moment diagram? I-add lang po natin. So, ibig sabihin, dapat yung moment sa kaliwang side equal sa moment sa right side because this represents the moment at point B. Ha? Ito yung point B natin. We have 111 minus 45. So, that will give you 66. Then, 116 minus 50. That will give you also... Sorry. 111 minus 45. That will give you 66. And 116 minus... 50, that will give you also 66. So, we have the correct diagram. Okay, anong next? So, syempre, wala pa pala tayong hinahanap. So, ano kaya yung mga mga gandang hanapin? So, we can provide a, ve a better discussion. So, lagay natin, identify. So, identify natin, let's say, number 1, slope sa A. Uh, number 2, let's say, deflection sa B. Uh, kunin din natin yung slope sa B. Kasi may papatunayan tayo mamaya. Ha? Then, kunin natin yung location of maximum deflection. So, number 5 is the magnitude of the maximum deflection. Okay. So, slope at A daw. Let's draw the elastic curve. No? So, this is your elastic curve. Lagyan natin ibang kulay. Na. Sabihin nyo, wala ako ibang kulay ng ball. Pin. Poor. <laughs> okay. So, we have here let's say your elastic curve so again elastic curve is just a representation of the exaggerated deformation of your structure okay so slope at a big sabihin kailangan ko ng tangent line at a ayan okay so lagyan natin ng notations we have here your tangent a okay. paano daw kinukuha yung slope at a so sabi natin uh, we we have here as you can see from the diagram no ang slope a po natin is ito okay and as we all know in analytic geometry slope is defined as the rise over run so meaning it is actually the distance of this point hanggang dito kasi yun yung rise niya or actually yung fall divided by run which is dito so in this case, this is actually your length of the beam and this is based on our discussion last time in our previous video, the distance from the elastic curve papunta doon sa uh, reference tangent natin is actually defined as the tangential deviation. So this is the tangential deviation of what? Of the reference uh, of, of the uh, point being considered, that is D, with respect to tangent line A. So, in this case, ibig sabihin pala, from this figure, slope at A is just equal to rise, which is the tangential deviation of D with respect to A, divided by the distance. Okay? So, lagay natin dito. Slope at A is just equal to the tangential deviation of D with respect to A divided by its length L. Okay, so yung L alam natin, obviously it's 5 meters. Ang wala po tayo sa tangential deviation of D with respect to A. Okay, so paano daw natin yan kukunin? As defined by the second moment error theorem, the tangential deviation of, of a given, uh, the tangential deviation of a point with respect to a tangent line is just equal to 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram area daw ng moment diagram between those two points multiplied by the, their respective centroids. Papunta saan? Papunta po doon sa location ng point ng elastic curve na consider natin and that is actually point D. So, ang gagawin lang po pala natin it's just 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram between points A and D multiplied by the centroid. Papunta saan? Papunta kay point D. So, let's look at the diagram. Tandaan nyo po, ah, ito po yung diagram. Okay. So, we have, uh, lagyan natin ng naming yung figures. Para hindi tayo nalito. Figure 1, figure 2, figure 3, and figure 4. Okay. So, let's have 
figure 1. Ano ba yung figure 1? Triangle, area 1 half base times height. So that will just give you 1 half of 111 multiplied by the uh, multiplied by its span which is 3 meters multiplied by its centroid papunta kay point D so anong centroid po nito? triangle, one third po hanggang dito so that's one third of 3 that will give you 1 plus since hanggang kay point D plus 2 plus figure 3 muna tayo para positive muna lahat Okay, it's also a triangle, so that will give you one half multiplied by 116. Ang distance po niyan is 2. Okay, so 116, ang distance is 2 meters. Ang centroid po niya is, so triangle siya na 2 meters, papunta po dito, that's 2 thirds of the triangle, or the span of the triangle. So 2 thirds of 2, that will give you 4 over 3. Next, minus, figure 2. Spandrel po, third degree. So, paano ba natin kinukuha yung area ng spandrel? Lagyan nga natin dito para hindi tayo na yung ito. No? Uh, meron tayong figure for all. Para matandaan natin. This is just a review of nth degree spandrel. No? So, let's say this is your um, A. Tapos ito B, yung height. Okay, let's say ito yung centroid. Okay. Ito po yung centroid 1, ito yung centroid 2. Okay, so paano daw kinukuha? Ang area niyan lagi is equal to 1 over um, n plus 1 multiplied by base times height. So, A, B. Okay. Yung centroid... Kapag papunta po dito, sa side na to, there is just 1 over n plus 2 ng uh, base. Or kung papunta naman sa 1, that is just n plus 1 over n plus 2 times a. So, yan po yung laging formulas natin. So, in this case, 1 fourth po, oh, no? Itong span, third degree span rin. 1 fourth ng 45 multiplied by, as you can see, nandito na po yung negative, no? So, no need to write negative 45. Kasi nandito na po yung negative. Multiplied by its span, which is 3 meters multiplied by the centroid. So, ang centro, ay, so centroid niya papunta po sa point D. So, in this case, that is Ang centroid po ng spandrel papunta sa side, sabi natin kanina, 1, plus n, 1 over n plus 2. So, 1 fifth po ng 3. So, that is 3 over 5 plus in distance ito, which is 2. Last figure, figure 4. No? So, minus first degree, 1 half ng 50 times area ng, ay, times length ng base times 2 thirds, kasi papunta sa side na to, 2 thirds ng 1, that will give 2 thirds plus 1, kasi papunta tayo kay D. Okay, so the value of the tangential division of D with respect to A is, well, let's calculate. So we have 0.5 times 111 times 3 plus 3, uh, times 3 rather plus 0.5 times 116 times 2 times 4 over 3 minus 0.25 or 1 fourth ng 45 times 3 times this is 10, 13 over 5 pwede nyo may lagi type sa calcul no? minus 0.5 ng 50 times 2 thirds plus 1 so that will give you 5 over 3 ok so we have 2199 over 4 ulitin natin up for the sake na ano na, kasi mahaba yung equation 0. 0.5 times 111 times 3 times 3 plus um, 
1162 so that will just be 116 times 4 over 3 since we cancel out naman minus 0.25 ng 45 times 3 times 1013 over 5 minus 25 times 5 over 3 Okay, ulitin natin kasi nagbago yung value. Baka mali ako kanina. So, lang yung pakita ko sa inyo ha. That's 0. 0.5 times 111 times 3 times 3. Tama? Plus 0. 0.5 times 116 times 2 times 4 over 3. O, oh, baka gusto nyo yung nakaganto. Wala akong problema sa akin. Okay, minus 0. 0.25 times 45 times 3 times 5 times 2, 10 plus 3, 13 over 5 tama, minus yung nalagay ko, tama naman minus 0.5 ng 50 times 1 times 2 thirds plus 1 so that will give 3, 5 over 3 so 20, 999 okay So that is our tangential deviation of D with respect to A. Ang hinahanap po natin is slope at A. Ang sabi po niya that is a tangential deviation of D with respect to A divided by the length L. So in that case, that is just, ah, sorry, nawala yung EI natin. So this is EI kasi naka over EI tayo. So this is 2099 divided by 4 EI. By the way, meron tayong to consider dito, no? then your length of 5 meters. No. As you can see, the tangential, the slope is very dependent on the rise over run, meaning kung rise siya should be positive, kung fall, kung down, downward, big sabihin negative, kung pakanan yung, yung run, positive, kung pakaliwa, negative. Why? Because remember, we are bounded by the conditions of the analytic geometry, meaning this is the point of origin. So, we can provide here your x and y axis. So, big sabihin, this is actually, yung loads natin are actually in quadrant 1. So, this is your x. Big sabihin, ito, yung tangential deviation of D with respect to A is actually downward. So, that will provide you a negative value here. Okay, that's why yung slope natin is negative. Okay, 5 by 5 so that will give you negative 2099 over 20 EI so malalaman mo naman na tama eh why? because in analytic geometry if the tangent line is actually from the point of origin papunta sa kanan eh downward that will give you a negative slope so that will actually give you a negative slope here so this is the value of the slope at A Okay, next. Ano ba yung hinahanap pa? Deflection at point B. Okay, so next to be found is the deflection at point B. Nasaan po ba yung deflection at point B? Ito po yun. That is the vertical distance from the original position of point B papunta dun sa elastic curve. So this is the deflection at B. Okay. But as you can see, no? Tingnan nyo tong figure na to. We can form here a triangle. Ito, hanggang dito i-highlight natin. Okay. In this triangle, we can have actually a distance of 3. Tapos yung total height natin ng triangle is actually the reflection at B. And, anong tawag natin dito? The vertical distance from the elastic curve of point B papunta sa reference tangent line A. So, this is a tangential division of B with respect to A. So, we can actually form a triangle here. But this is actually your slope at B plus the tangential deviation of B with respect to A. Pero, as you can see, we extend natin yung triangle na yun. Ito yan. Here. Okay. 
So as you can see that is a, this is the tangential deviation of D with respect to A. This is 3 meters, this is 2 meters. Bakit natin kailangan yan? Okay. Remember, ang nakukuha natin based on the moment error theorem is our only slopes at tangential deviations lang. Wala nang iba. Okay? So meaning, in this case, we need to... Ang, since ang meron lang tayo are tangential deviations, meron na tayong tangential deviation of D with respect to A based on sa kaninang problem or question. So, ang kailangan ko na lang pala is tangential deviation of B with respect to A so that we can get the value of the slope, ay, the deflection of D. Bakit po? Because we can use here that D ratio and proportion. This is actually equal to the deflection of B plus the tangential deviation of B with respect to A divided by its span, which is 3 meters, equals the tangential deviation of D with respect to A divided by the whole span of the triangle, which is 5 meters. So, kung meron na ako nito, makukuha ko daw to, makukuha ko ngayon yung deflection. But remember, this, when we use ratio and proportion, we are using the absolute value of, the, their absolute value, because these are distances. Okay, so ibig sabihin, ipoprovide natin yung TD over A ng vertical distance, ganun din yung vertical distance ng TB over A. Okay, so in that case, let's have our next paper. No? Pagyan natin dito para makikita nyo pa rin. Here. Okay. So let's proceed. Kailangan ko na lang daw is the tangential deviation of B with respect to A. So that is just equal to 1 over EI kasi sabi natin it's just 1 over EI multiplied by area of the diagram between those two points. Ano ba yung area between points A and B? Balikan natin yung figure natin kanina. That's figure 1 and 2 only. So pakitandaan na isang triangle na ang magnitude is 111, ang span is 3 meters, at saka isa pong spandrel, 3rd degree, ang magnitude is 45 ang span din po is 3. So, okay. So, ang area po natin is yung area 1 muna. Sabi natin, it's a triangle with a magnitude. Triangle, so 1 of base times height. Magnitude of 111 multiplied by the base, which is 3 meters multiplied by the centroid papunta kay B. So, that is 1 third of 3. So, that's 1 meter. Okay. Minus yung figure 2 natin, spandrel, 3rd degree, so that's 1 fourth, multiplied by 45 kilonewton meter, multiplied by its span, which is 3 meters, multiplied by the center, then yung center dulit ng spandrel natin, apunta sa side, that is 1 over n plus 2, so that's 1 fifth of 3. So that will be 3 over 5. Okay, now, so ano daw pong value? So let's calculate. So again, that's 0.5 of 111 times 3 minus 0.25 ng 45 times 3 times 0.6 or that's 3 over 5. So this is 585 over 4. I-recheck lang natin kasi kanina nagkamali tayo sa calculate. 0.5 ng 111 times 3 minus 0.25 times 45 times 3 times 3 over 5. Okay, same. 5 over EI, sorry. 585 over 4 EI. So, let's go back on the ratio and proportion. Sabi niya, deflection at B plus a tangential deviation. So, that is give you 585 over 4 EI. Divide by the span of 3 meters equals the tangential deviation of D with respect to A. In that case, that is uh, 2099 over 4 EI divided by the span of 5 meters. Okay, so we can now determine the deflection at point B. So that is 2099 divided by 4 divided by 5 times 3 minus... 585 divided by 4. 
So that will give you 843 over 5 EI. So, lagay na lang natin. Remember, ha, yung numerical value natin, ang unit niyan is kilonewton cubic meter. Ha? Why? Kasi po, kung mapapansin nyo, yung area ng, yung moment diagram natin, yung magnitude yun, kilonewton meter na. Nung kinuha natin yung area, minultiply na naman natin siya sa meter. So, that's kilonewton meter squared. That's why, yung unit ng slope is kilonewton meter squared. Yung numerical value, ha, tapos i-divide natin yun sa EI. Then, yung deflection, before before dividing EI, the unit is kilonewton cubic meter. Okay, may kita nyo naman because the value of the flexural rigidity EI is kilonewton meter squared. So, umatitira is in meters. Okay. Lagyan natin ng uh, direction. So, that is downward. So, as you can see, based on the figure, it should be downward. No? So, that is how we determine the deflection at B. Sino na lang kulang? Slope at B. Ayan, para magamit natin yung um, first moment area theorem. So, yung next down question is how can we determine the slope at B? So, sabi natin kanina, or uh, in our previous discussion in the concept, that this, the change in slope between two points is just actually equal to the area of the moment diagram between those two points. So, meaning, yung theta B daw minus theta A, provided that theta A is your reference, no, is equal to the area of the moment diagram between those two points. So, lagay natin area ng M diagram between those two points. So, that's A to B. Since may slope A na tayo, so point slope B ang hinahanap natin. Okay. So, meron na tayong value ng slope A. Tama? Ang kailangan ko na lang po is si slope, ay, yung area. So, that will give you slope ng B equals the area of the moment diagram. So, that will give you 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram between points A and B. Anong napansin nyo? It's just actually the area of this and this. So, parehas lang siya nito, no? Patanggalin lang natin yung distances kasi area lang daw. So, that's 1 half of 111 multiplied by 3 meters minus 1 fourth of 45 Parehas lang ha Ayan. Pinapakita ko lang sa inyo At ang ganyan natin yung 1 at saka yung 3 fifths times 3 meters Ayan Plus Ililipat natin siya on the right side that will give you plus theta A. So, that will give you, o oh, sige, lagyan natin yung value. Plus po ng, ano po yung theta A natin kanina? Negative 2099 over 20 EI. Negative 2099 over 20 EI. Okay, so theta B is equal to, so that will give you 0.5 of 111 times 3 minus 0.25 now 45 times 3 minus 2099 over 20 so that will give you positive 139 over 5 EI tandaan nyo po ah positive kung bakit ko binigay itong problem na to because of the next problem uh, or next question no? so kung papansin nyo po Ang next question natin is for us to determine the location of the maximum deflection and the maximum deflection. So, as you can see, since dinivide natin or we provided the moment diagram or the moment by parts, malapit dito sa point B na to, so wala sa magkabilang gilid, we will be, the first thing to do for us to determine the location is for, is to assume kung nasan yung maximum deflection. Kung nasa span AB ba or nasa span BD, bakit po? Kasi magkakaroon po tayo ng cutting plane. Ikakat po natin yan. Bakit? Bakit? Kasi varying po yung moment diagram natin. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, paano kung nandito po yung maximum deflection? Kunyari lang, nandito sa span na to, pero nagkatako hanggang dito. Pag sinove natin yung value ng X to determine the maximum deflection, the location of the maximum deflection tapos ang lumabas is lagpas ang 3 meters so ulit na naman tayo 
ikakat na naman natin sa dito. So, ang nahihirapan tayo kapag ganun eh. Kapag wala tayong, oo nga, it, it is actually trial and error. Pero if, in, in science kasi, if we are using trial and error, nandun pa rin tayo sa best guess. Oh, narinig ko yan kay Sheldon Cooper. No? Sabi niya, if, if we will be having a trial and error, we will be still using um, the best guess. No? Ano ba yung best guess natin? Kung di nyo pala kilala si Sheldon Cooper, he is actually sa Big Bang Theory. I'm a fan. <laughs> okay? So, paano natin malalaman yung best guess natin? That's why we have here. Okay? Theta B is positive. Ano yung theta A natin? Negative. So, let's go back. Theta A is negative and theta B is positive. Okay? What does it mean? Okay? Ano ba yung natatandaan natin sa analytic geometry saka sa differential calculus? Sabi natin, uh, if we are to determine the minimum value, in this case, that is the lowest point of the elastic curve, kaya tinawag natin na minimum value sa differential calculus, the maximum minima must have a slope of zero. Kaya nga ang ginagawa natin sa differential calculus, ano ba ginagawa natin pag hinahanap natin yung maximum minima? Di ba kinukuha natin yung first derivative? Tapos in-equate natin sa zero. Why? Because the first derivative of any equation is actually the slope of that equation at that point. Meaning, the slope must be zero at the point where the maximum, maximum deflection is A sa point A, negative yung slope. Sa point B, positive na. Can we mathematically guess or scientifically guess or technically guess na lang as, 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 an, as an engineer, no? Na dumaan tayo sa point of zero slope? Yes. Kasi from negative to positive. Meaning, we are very sure that the location of the maximum deflection is actually located between points A and B. So, yun ang best guess natin. Dito na natin matatagpuan yung maximum deflection. Meaning, dyan na tayo magkakat. Okay? So, let's proceed. I-drawing ulit natin yung moment diagram. Okay? So, ganito yung naging itsura ng moment diagram natin. Ito yung... Then, we have here your... Tapos ito. Ang mga values niyan, this is 111, this is uh, negative 45, this is negative 50, this is, uh, balikan na natin para sigurado, 116. Sorry. Okay, so distances, 3 meters, this is 1 meter, this is also 1 meter, so the total is 2. Lagyan natin points, point A, B, C and point D. Okay? So, ang kailangan natin is to cut this section. No? Maglalagay ako ng cut dyan. This is your distance x. Let's say, we are looking for the location of the maximum deflection. Okay? Bakit natin ikakat? Kasi gagamitin natin yung concept ng first moment area theorem na yung change in slope daw must be equal to the area of the moment diagram. Ibig sabihin, yung slope at A plus yung diagram nito, anong dapat equal? Zero. Tama? Kasi yung difference, yung slope ng point na to, kung ito yung maximum location, must be zero. So, zero minus nito must be equal to the moment diagram. Okay? So, let's, let's, let's uh, have this value. So, since ikakat natin yan in terms of x, kailangan ko makuha yung value nito which is a varying value, y1, and let's say this is y2. So, paano ba natin yung kinukuha? Based on our spandrel, ang basic, let's go back on the spandrel, ang basic equation ng spandrel is y equals k x raised to n, or the general equation. Meaning, k is the proportionality constant. Meaning, k is equal to y over x sub n, equals y sub 1 over x sub 1 raised to n equals y sub 2 over x sub 2 raised to n. So, yan po yung gagamitin natin na pag ratio and proportion. So, let's go back. 
how do we get the ratio and proportion of this triangle? We have y1 over x, distance x, ito po, equals yung buong triangle, which is 111 divided by the whole span, which is 3. That's why y1 is equal to 111 over 3 of x. How paano naman po si y2? Third degree yan. So, sabi natin sa kanina, so that's y1, uh, y2 rather, over x raised to n. So, that's x cubed equals 45, then 3 cubed. So, that will give you 3 cubed is 27. So, 45 divided by 27, that's 5 thirds of x cubed. Again, ratio in proportion absolute value of the absolute values because we are dealing with distances okay so in that case we can now have sabi natin kanina the slope at the point of maximum locate maximum deflection let's say that's point x equals the area of the moment diagram multiplied by ah sorry 1 over ei multiplied by the area of lagi ko na lang ha, m diagram from point A to point X. Plus the slope at A. Yan po yung magiging general equation natin. Kasi yung change ng slope must be equal to the area of the moment diagram. But then again, we all know that the slope at point X, since that is the maximum uh, the location of the maximum deflection, it should be 0. So, ito yung magiging general equation natin. So, we have, lagay natin dito, 1 over EI. Multiplied by the area of the moment diagram. In this case, ito yun. So, triangle muna. 1 half of magnitude is Y1. Y1 is 111 over 3X. Multiplied by its span x wala pong centroid kasi po area lang po ang kinoconsider natin dahil slope po ang kinoconsider natin okay minus ng diagram na to that is one fourth kasi third degree spandrel times y2 ang y2 ko po ay five thirds ng x cube multiplied by the span of x Plus theta A, tandaan po natin ang theta A po natin ay negative 2099 over 20 EI equals 0. So cancel EI, we can now actually solve for the value of X. So natin, so we have 0.5 of 111 over 3 times alpha X squared minus 0 0.25 times 5 over 3 times alpha x raised to 4. Lipatan sa kabilang side. That will give you 2099 over 20. Pwede pala natin siyang i-mode 5 si squared raised to 4. Pwede siyang mode 5. Quadratic 3. Tingnan natin. If there's something wrong, kung mag- kung mag imaginary there's something wrong. So we have uh, negative 0. 0.25 this is 0. 0.25 times 5 over 3, then we have, oh sorry, negative, negative 0.25 times 5 over 3, then positive 0.5 times, So 
So the answers are, ginawa ko, nilet ko to as uh, nag mode 5 2 ako. That's a, that's a technique, no? Kasi raised to 4, this is uh, squared. So parang ganto na lang. Pwede natin ilet yung, let's say, a to be x squared. So, ibig sabihin ito magiging a to, ito magiging a squared. So, pwede natin siyang gamitin ng quadratic equation. So, that will give you a values of 37.728 Tapos, another value of 6.67 Ayan. Makita niya. 711367 So remember this is equal to x squared So ang values pala ng x natin Apat O oh, sige So ito, itong dalawa Positive, negative Ibig sabihin, square root lang natin Okay, so square root ng 37.728633 So this is positive, negative 6.14 2382543 meters then we have ito which is square root of 6.677 so that's 2 point positive negative 2.58401159 meters so Ano po yung i-consider natin dito? Obviously, since we need distance, we need positive. But 6 point something is an extraneous root because it is beyond the span of the beam. So, ang gagamitin po natin is itong positive value. Sorry, ayan. We will be using the positive value because the negative values are extraneous root kasi wala namang distance na negative and 6 point something is also an extraneous root because the span of the beam is only 5 meters. So that's why we will be using the value of x equals 2.584 or pwede na yan, meters as the location of the maximum deflection. And last one for us to determine the maximum deflection Ang gagawin na lang po natin is yung mas mabilis na yung shortcut. Balik tayo dito. Yung location ng maximum deflection natin is somewhere here. Okay? As you can see, dapat daw po zero yung tangent ay zero po yung tangent line niyan. Rather than using yung ratio and proportion na ginawa natin kanina, as you can see, etong distance na to is the same as distance ng deflection papunta sa point na to. Parallel yan eh. They, they are two parallel lines. So rather than using tangential deviation of x with respect to a para eh, dito, tas mag ratio and proportion para makukuha yung def maximum deflection, we can just actually use itong tangential deviation na to, which is tangential deviation of a with respect to tangent line x. So for us, we'll, for us to have a, an easier an easier calculation. So, sabi natin, the maximum deflection is just equal to the tangential deviation of A with respect to X. So, it is just equal to 1 over EI multiplied by the area of the moment diagram. Ito yan. The area of the moment diagram between points A and X multiplied by the distance papunta kay A. Iter ilagay na lang natin muna in terms of x, no? Tapos saka na lang natin substitute since may value naman tayo ng x. So, i-copy lang natin actually ito, itong dalawa. Then, lalagyan lang natin siya ng centroid. So, that's 1 half of 111 over 3 of x times x times yung centroid nito. Papunta daw dito, that's 2 thirds of the span kasi triangle. So, that's 2 thirds of x minus 1 fourth of 5 over 3 of x cubed times x. Papunta naman yung centroid nito papunta kay A. Ano pong centered ng spandrel? Kapag papunta sa vertex, that is n plus 1 over n plus 2 times the span. So that will give you 4 over 5 of x. So that is a tangential deviation. So the tangential deviation of A with respect to x is actually equal to you have 0 0.5 times 111 divided by 3 times 2 thirds. 
So that will give you 37 over 3 ng x cubed minus, that's 0.25 times 5 over 3 times 4 over 5. So that will give you minus 1 third of x4 raised to 5. Then, the deflection maximum is at x equals, yung kanina, we have 2.584 na lang. Therefore, the maximum deflection is actually equal to, so we have uh, 37 over 3. Alpha x, raise, alpha x cubed over 3 minus alpha x raised to 5 over 3. Calculate 2.584. So that will give you 174. Point 0.3924 over EI. So that will give you the maximum deflection. So medyo mahaba. But the advantage of having, of using the Again, the advantage of using the moment error theorem is if we have a variable EI. If I have still time, I can provide you another video. For an example, if EI is different for every span. Okay, now for this, um, thank you for watching. I hope you will see the next example using the moment error theorem for statically indeterminate beam. See you on our next class or see you in our, our next discussion.